Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm so excited because we have Jimmy T from the Little Iguanas with us today. He is an amazing gentleman and I'm going to have him tell you a little about himself because he has an amazing story to tell and he's done incredible things with his life in the last 30 years to help other children and parents and families worldwide. So Jimmy, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Well, I'd love to. And thank you for having me on, Stacey. I appreciate it. And good morning to everybody out there in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I am Jimmy T, Jim Tomaszewski. I'm executive director for the Little Iguana Children's Safety Foundation, a program that's 30 years this August. And what we do is we save two to eight, two to 10 year olds from abduction, child predators, serious injuries, trafficking, everyday safety, well-being. But we also teach kindness and respect and we instill self-worth um, you know, and self-esteem into the children at such a young age. Everything we do, we deliver through music because number one way to teach anybody anything is music. As as we all know, you know, we don't we don't remember who our teachers were in school or my my situation. I don't even know what school I went to when I was <laughs> a kid. But you know, I could sing every single song that my grandparents listened to, my parents listened to as I grew up in life. So we put everything together through music and it was such a powerful way. We've saved so many children with the youngest is age three, all the way up to a 16 year old that remembered our silly, stupid songs as she told the police when she escaped the level three sex offender. Um, we've even had parents that, uh, you know, the children go through our buckle up program, one of one of the many programs we have. And we say, you know, you can't drive the car, you know, the car can't start moving until the seatbelt's all buckled up. You've gone too quick if you didn't hear the click and, you know, and the kids are on their moms telling them, oh, you got to sit, you know, you got to wear your seatbelt. Next thing you know, mom's in an accident. She never wore a seatbelt before, but she was wearing it because her kids got on her. She's safe. You know, it's just amazing. It's just not small children, but uh, basically everybody. And we love doing it. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's won us numerous awards, um, TV, live musicals, and uh, we look forward to going all over the world with this. And that's our goal today is to talk to everybody, share our information, let people know that there's something there that helps parents teach kids in a fun, non-threatening way, because it's so hard to talk about a lot of the things we, you know, we talk about everyday safety alongside the tough tough things you know the right. strangers or you know what to do in harm alarm and you know we we have many different programs now you got into this about 30 years ago what motivated you to go in this direction to help children and and to really motivate others to to uh, work together to improve our society as a whole well you know it took me till i turned 61 years old to be able to you know talk about things in life and just a couple of years ago where I told people when I was a young man you know I I didn't have the greatest of life growing up I had don't get me wrong I I had a life okay and and it was okay but there wasn't the factor you know like as a, a Catholic altar boy you know you got abused by priests you know you didn't have a safe haven in your life and you know when I had my children 35 years later you know 35 years ago I had my kids and I said, no one will ever hurt my children the way that I was hurt. You know, it as a as a kid growing up, I had no self-esteem, no self-worth. I, I couldn't speak to other people. I could talk to my friends because they were my friends and we knew each other. But a total stranger, I couldn't go into a store by myself and buy things or I couldn't have conversations with other people, look them in the eyes. Yeah, You know, um, so when my children, when I had my children, I said, no one's going to hurt them. I'm going to get a program up together, went out there and looked and I found that there was nothing out there. <laughs> Literally, there was nothing out there to help kids at a young age, teach them in a way that they can learn and then absorb it and remember it. Because, I mean, just because you teach them something doesn't do you any good unless they remember it forever. Yeah. So, you know, so we analyzed all the programs that were out there, we found out number one way to teach anybody anything is through music and interactive role-playing. Those are the two top, 
you know, and that's what we focused on. So we created some live musicals that went into schools, elementary schools, community events, and we'd sing our songs, whether it's run, 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 yell and tell, you know, who's a stranger, get permission, my harm alarm, that funny feeling inside when something's not right, I need to share it with someone yeah. that I trust. I mean, there's so many different programs that we've created all delivered through music. And now what we'd like to do is have people in other states and countries be be me, you know, take us into their area and become whether it's an affiliate, you know, we have yeah. a program where people can share our information with others and even make money if they wanted to off of it just by, sh you know, sharing the information. But, you know, we, we just don't make simple product. You know, a lot of people go, you know, oh, let's let's hand out a million pens. Oh, we must have done something. Or here's, you know, we handed out a million water bottles. You know, that doesn't do anything. It's just a waste of money, tchotchke kind of thing. Yeah. You, know? you need to make stuff that really works, especially like we were talking about a little bit ago. You know, you have you have 30, whatever it is, 30 reading, 30 percent reading proficiency level in our country. Some are higher, some are lower, you know kids that can't read that's such a powerful tool to be able to read you know and like i was telling you we created the book you know uh, we created our gift from the heart book but the but the fantastic thing about it is the qr code when you scan it you hear the words how they're pronounced you hear how it's used within the story yeah. and as a sufferer of adhd like i was telling you before you know i needed to add music to it to break up the the monotony of just reading a book yes. you know, because I couldn't stay focused. So we have music within the story. We have, you know, um, just, just a great way for kids to learn. And that's the first of our series. We have a series of them coming out, but our first one was a gift from the heart. I love that. I love that. I think it's so important to, you know, to combine a, a, a cocktail of ways for people to learn. Because as we mentioned, everybody learns and retains information differently. You know, yeah. it all depends on the individual and how that individual's brain works. And we all work differently. And I, I like that you interacted and you put that QR code, which I thought was genius. And you have music in the background where people, and then people hear the the pronunciation the, the correct way. And it helps them to verbalize and to speak better and to understand. And also that music, you know, makes it interesting and also makes it flow. So it retains longer and, and it stays in your brain and it just doesn't go one ear out the other, which a lot, most of the, uh, over 70% of the material we learn goes in one ear out the other. So I Correct. think that's great. Correct. How uh, we know that it works, you know, we, we, we had a three-year-old we, we tell people that we work at such a young age, people go, oh, come on, come on, come on. Well, we re the reason we do this is for, for multiple reasons. The big one is the most abused, neglected, and whatever verbiage you want to say, children out there are now cradle, newborn to th age three. That's the most abused and neglected age group, Okay. So do you think if you're teaching somebody at five, 10 or 10 or 12 that, you know, it's already been embedded in them, you know, yes. the number one cause of drugs and alcohol is a crappy childhood. Yes. It's been since caveman days, it will be till the end of time, but we have yes. no programs to teach children how to be happy and kind and yes. considerate and, 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 and moral as in human being moral, you know, right. think, treat others the way you would want to be treated. Right. Exactly. If we did that, we would change the world immediately and it cost us no money. Right. But everybody who talks about saving the world and peace and that they're the same people turning around talking about another person, whether it's a political uh, side or or a nationality side or color side or shape size or long hair, short hair. Just stop. We're just so unhappy with who we've become as human beings that we need to be angry to other people. And it's shameful. We're really, we just need to stop that. So we focus on the kids. That's our big thing. And when we started this program, you know, we had little kids that remembered it, a three-year-old. Unfortunately, he was tied up sexually abused in his childcare facility by people that ran it. 
started regressing. The person said, I'll hurt you. I'll kill you. Mommy, daddy, take you away. So this little boy is totally out of his mind, doesn't know what to do, starts regressing, soiling his pants, nightmares, you know, that type of thing. He's driving home one day, tells his mommy that mommy, you know, goes to the doctors. They tell him it's growing pains. You know, there's things he's growing through on his drive home. He says, mommy, we got to call Lil Iguana. Lil Iguana said he'd help me, protect me, because we talked about harm alarm months ago in his child care facility. Right. So you have three year olds that can get it and understand it. Right. But then we bring kids up on stage to be part of our stage show. And one little girl came up when she was eight years old, second grade. She came up to do run, 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 yell and tell. It's what you do if someone's trying to get you to go with them and yeah. you don't have permission to go with them. Well, eight years go by. She's up on stage doing this this song with us, goes back to her seat. Eight years go, goes by. She's walking down the street and a level three sex offender tries to abduct her. So she runs into the store screaming and yelling. They call the police. The police show up. They said, you know, what's going on? How'd you get away? And she said, that silly, stupid song. <laughs> Little Iguana taught me. Eight years before that, she only heard it one time, but she heard it over and over and over again. And she was part of it. Yeah. She was able to get away. And, and that is the power of what we bring. And it's not scary. See, that's the best part about Little Iguana. You know, right. a lot of people are afraid to teach this stuff. Oh, well, we'll just keep it in the closet or we'll just... We won't, we don't want to talk about it because it can't happen to me. Yeah. Well, we all know, you know, and, and 90, 80 some odd percent isn't people that they don't know either. 80 yeah. some odd percent is people they know. So that's why we teach. Everybody is considered a stranger unless you have permission to go with them. Right. People say, oh, you shouldn't use the word stranger because, well, you know what? There's 8 billion people in the world. Okay. And nine and eight and seven billion, 900 million, whatever the thing is. All use the word stranger. Yeah. I don't want to change. You know, I'm not trying to teach them the old oh, stranger, stranger. I'm just trying to explain to them what is meant by that. Yeah. Permission. Well, what's permission? Permission's looking mommy or daddy right in the eyeballs. And we say eyeballs because when you say eyeballs amongst little two year olds and three year olds, they giggle. They think it's the funniest thing that an adult said eyeballs. Yeah. So you look them in the eyeballs, you ask, and you get a yes. So if I'm going to go somewhere, stranger awareness is eyeballs ask yes. Okay, now I have to go follow those rules. It's so simple that children can understand it and retain it. Yeah, I think that's great because people don't realize but over 70% of our society comes from dysfunctional families alone. And, yes. you know, everything starts from, from the moment that you come, even, even before you're in the womb, you know, before you come out of the womb, Everything the baby hears and feels and picks up, you know, develops their characteristics, develops their personality. And by the time that fallopian, um, by the time the egg drops down the fallopian tube, you have over 240 characteristics already developed in that child. And then when that child comes in, into this world and that people don't realize, just like a puppy, however you treat it when they're, when they're a baby, is yep. how they're going to turn out. Are they going to be a loving puppy or are they going to be a spiteful one and an angry one? It all depends from the moment that you get that puppy, from the moment that child is in your hands, how you raise that child, how you treat that child, the amount of love and affection you show that child. You know, that's why so many people don't even know how to show love because they were never taught because their parents weren't taught and the, the vicious cycle goes on and on and on. And it's time to break that cycle. We have to, you know, and, and this is a great way to do it is the services that you provide, you know, and, and to make people aware because a lot of times, like we talked about earlier, in our generation, it we didn't parents didn't talk about these things. They didn't talk about how to protect yourself. Or if you went to your parent and you said, you know, this this man did something to me, you know, a lot of times the parents wouldn't even do anything, you know. Correct. And Correct. you know, it, it was just like, don't tell anybody, or you know, or it, it was stay away from that. Stay yeah. away from you know. Never mind. You know, let's let's stop this before a thousand other kids have this situation. Right. Right. We pushed it in the closet forever and 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 we can't like you say these children coming out have so much going on for them they're so much smarter than us and it's the way you teach them you know my, again my baba my Gigi, my polish grandparents my baba would always tell me 
You know, you don't hang around with little Petey. He's a little brat. Yeah. But you didn't say those words, you know, he's a little brat. And if somebody doesn't fix little Petey, he's going to grow up to be a big brat. Mm -hmm. They didn't have college education, Stacy. They just knew that if you didn't fix Petey at five years old, what's Petey going to be at 10 years old? Exactly. And what's Petey going to be at 20 years old? Exactly. So you need to fix PD at such a young age and help them, give them guidance. Like yeah. you say, most children, you know, we'll do stage shows. You, you know, this is just so, this is the world I live in. We'll do a live musical in a school. We'll go in, we'll set up the costume character, the performers who sing and dance, all the equipment. And you're talking during a show and you point to one of the little kids that answers your question. And you look them right in the eyes or her right in the eyes and you say, oh, my goodness, you're the smartest kid in this school. I can't believe you answered that question. That is unbelievable. You are the smartest kid. And do you you could just see the glow and you could just see the pride and their head swell and their shoulders swell. Yeah. And they're just smiling the whole time where they weren't smiling before. Right. And then at the end of the show, you have kids that come up to you because, you know, they don't have whatever and they hug you and they say, I love you, Jimmy T. Can you be my daddy? Or they'll hug one of the characters, you know, one of the performers. Yeah. You are beautiful. You know, could you, you know, I mean, you could just see. And it doesn't matter what state or what country we're in. Because yeah. we've done things in Bahamas where, you know, in other, other places, Canada, whatever. And the same thing happens. The kids just want to be loved. They yeah. just want to be filled with something that makes them want to to live a better life yeah and that's what little iguana is all about and it's done in kid-friendly way no matter what learning level you're at it doesn't matter what every, everybody loves music <laughs> oh yeah no it's very true you know because you have so many people out there so many adults out there that are, are, are looking for love there are so many times where i would throw a compliment out to somebody and they would just gleam and you can tell that person doesn't get many compliments and 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 it's sad you know because in, in our, our society today people don't realize the importance of kindness and people don't realize the importance of of teaching children you know at a, at a very young age and how important it is you know people don't realize that what you do from the moment they're in your home, how you treat them, how you raise them, how you protect them, all these things add up. And this is the this is the type of person you're going to be creating. And then they wonder why these kids go off the deep end or they they do things they're not supposed to. Well, it it, it all starts from the beginning, you know, yes. a lot, you know, and it's if we teach them the right things in the beginning, you know, what a difference it can make. But I don't think a lot of people, a lot of adults realize the importance of how the impact it makes when you treat, when you, from you zero to three, how, how much of an impact it actually makes on that child. Sure. Your foundation, I don't care what, what you call it, your moral, your human being foundation, you know, you have to be so selective of words these days because, you know, some person yeah. doesn't like that word and you're just that. I don't say words to be mean. I say words because I'm 61 years old and I've used those words for 61 years. Okay, <laughs> So it's not meanness that I call somebody, yeah. uh, whatever, guy, girl, man, whatever. It, it's just how I was brought up. And I say it with the most respect to people. Yes. But people don't realize that your foundation in life is set by age five. Yes. Okay. And, and this is not me saying this. This is me saying it for 30 years before. And then finally everybody else catching up with us you know yeah. they're like oh yeah did you know two years ago i got the study that some lady came out uh, the school whatever oh your foundation in life is set by five i've been saying that for 30 years and no one listens because you know i've gone to politicians and this is the sad part about everything yeah. i've actually gone to senators and congress people okay and I've asked them for support to put this program throughout all either the schools or in a community or wherever. They told me children don't vote. <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time getting backing because kids don't vote. And I was like, yeah, but that 15 year old can pop a cap in your butt in, in a few more years. So maybe you should start thinking about it. You know, right. I mean, in today's society, we have babies killing babies. Yeah. And we shouldn't have that. 
Right. You know, we shouldn't have the world of everybody wants to take something away from you. Oh, we got to take guns away because there's too many guns. I get that. I get people need people with issues should not have weapons. I understand that 100 percent. But a gun doesn't kill somebody. You know, five years ago, the number one cause of death was hammers. People were hitting people with hammers. OK, right. you know, and then all of a sudden the guns got out of control. Why? Because. We should put people in jail. Once you use a gun, you should go to jail for a long period of time and think about, should I use a gun ever again? Right. And then you don't have those half of 1% on the streets running around using guns. Yeah. I don't see you running out, popping somebody with a, you know, with a gun. I don't go do that. Right. So so it doesn't, me- it doesn't mean that it, we need to control everything aspect of it. We just need to start teaching people how to be kind and respectful, yeah. you know? We take away everybody's gun. You know, back in the days of the cavemen, they were talking about clubs. Oh, we should take away clubs. Clubs hurt people, you know? Uh, You know what I mean? Same same thing. Just It's just so silly, you know? We don't address the cause. What we do is we just go after whatever to make me more powerful politically or more money in my pocket or whatever it is. Little Iguana, we want to focus just on our children, bringing them up kind, happy, healthy, safe, just live a good life. You know, every child, every, every one of us in society have that path, you know, those, we could go left or we could go right. Right. Left is the good, right. Well, you know, is the bad. And sometimes what happens is when children, humans are, are by themselves, they don't have friends, they don't have you know, people that they can turn to, you know, because that that's why we put people in solitary confinement in jail is because it's the worst of the worst punishment. Right. So, so a person that's in solitary confinement in life, maybe in their home forever, you know, they have no friends, they, you know, it's the same thing. Yeah. It really is. So you have that path. What happens is I come along and I'm a good person and I say, Hey, let's go here. And you follow me down that path. Right. Or somebody next door they're not so good and because you have nobody in your life they're the only ones that show up and say hey uh, let's go do this and because you're like wow somebody loves me somebody cares for me i go do this yeah. it's not right but because it's been it's been you know i have somebody now i don't care you yeah. know what i mean and, and, oh, and 100%. See that in a lot of relationships and a lot of you know, in a world where, you know, abuse and, you know, yes. you should not be able to hurt another human being. No, Period. we should not be allowed. You shouldn't be able to strike somebody, punch somebody, hurt somebody, and they be put out and then let go. You need to 100%. sit, you need to sit somewhere in a timeout. Yes. <laughs> my, mom, my mom and dad put me in a corner. Okay. Mm-hmm. We can put adults in corners if we want to, you yeah. know, just, they need time out. So Again, Little Iguana, everything that we deliver is in a fun, upbeat way. Parents don't have to worry about what we're teaching because it's what I would want to teach my children. Yeah. Okay. So that's why it's so popular. And and now, like I said, now's our mission to get it in the hands of every single person. If nothing more, you know, to, for them to get a book to see what we do or go online and, and look up our, our, you know, memberships. We have safety up where parents can, you know, pay $29 a month, I think it is, or less money if they buy it for the year, but they get to use all the music, all the downloadables. So if, if mom has an issue with kids in their, in their neighborhood running across the street, you know, we've had this, you know, we've had, We've had towns call us because kids are getting hit by cars because they're just running through the streets. We teach them. We go in. We 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 focus on the issues and deliver it through music and fun, and then they remember it and, right. and they're not hurt anymore. Yeah. Is, do you have programs where the the parents can get interactive with the children? That way, the parents can learn the right way to do things because some parents might not know the right way to do things, and they're doing things the wrong way. And maybe by, you know, interacting or figuring out different ways to approach situations that might be more better beneficial than what they're actually doing at the moment. Do your services also have things yes. that both parents and children can work together as one? 
yes, the safety upside um, has that, you know, there's crafts. See, we, we made it so like you're learning, you're learning safety, but you might be doing a, a, a food craft. You right. may be, you may be doing, you know, ants on a log where you take celery and you put some peanut butter in, you know, <laughs> you know throw some raisins in, or, or um, you make a bus, you know, with banana wheels and, you know, but they're, but why they're learning it and why they're doing this, they're listening to the music. Gotcha. They hear the songs. So they're learning in a non-threatening, non, you have to sit down and learn this today, boys and girls. Because that scares people. Yeah. You know, a lot of people get scared. A lot of people can't even take tests because it's so overwhelming for them. You yeah. know, they know the, they know the information, but they just can't get it out of their heads. Yeah. So again, we did it music. You sit there, you listen in, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that song. It says, da -da -da, get permission from your mom. Oh, I have to get permission from my mom or my dad or the person in charge. I get it now. That's what it meant. And it's so fun that parents learn it too. And we, and we make a lot of different uh, digital downloads because people say, well, why do you have so many different di digital downloads? Well, you might be able to do a word find very easily. I might not be able to do a word find. Right. I might be a beautiful artist that I can color and I can draw. So we have that type of activity too for them. Or a word maze where you, you know, a maze where you find, start the beginning. Some people can't do that. But some people can count how many faces, sad faces and happy faces are and put them together. So we have so many different downloadable activities for parents to use that it's just a wonderful resource that they can learn. Homeschoolers, this is, this is the, 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 the golden ticket for homeschoolers, I always call it, because mm. it gives you the ability to teach a lot of different topics that you may not be able to talk to your children about. Yeah. Because, you know, strangers or, you know, people say, oh, do you touch good touch, bad touch? We don't talk about good touch, bad touch. That's too difficult for us to to talk to a young children, child. Yeah. What we talk about is your harm alarm. That funny feeling inside when something's not right, somebody might yes. be wanting you to do something or they want you to go mm -hmm. hang out with them or or be mean to somebody yeah. and inside it didn't feel right to you. So you go share it with the person that you trust. You say, you know, mommy or daddy or my teacher or grandpa or grandma or my guardian, because not everybody has moms and dads in this world. Okay. Right. So they go to the person that they trust the most and they say to them, Hey, this is happening. What should I do? And trust me, this stops, you know, the, the thing that we had 40 years later, you know, this person came out with PSD, you know, whatever. Well, I get it. But at least with our programs, you can talk about it right away. It stops right away. And another thing, too, is I would love to have every kid wear a little iguana something so that at least people know, hey, I can't touch that kid because he must know <laughs> or she must know little iguana teaching. Yeah. And I'll be in trouble if I do anything wrong. It puts them on on you know on the spot too. I so, love that. Yeah. In our worldwide day, you know, I was talking to you about our worldwide day coming yeah. up a little bit. We are looking for kindness ambassadors for all over the world. And it's just for our worldwide day called It's Easy to Be Kind. And it's just coming up to celebrate our 30th anniversary. We have a music video called It's Easy to Be Kind. We want, um, we have a, a wristband coming out that says it's easy to be kind so people can can wear them and, and, and show that they, they believe in the cause. Because if everybody treated everybody the way they wanted to be treated, immediately there would be kindness. There would be all the anger, the hatred would go away. Yeah. And if you don't believe that, you know, people say, oh, I believe in world peace, but yet they turn around and talk about somebody meanly. Right. You know, yeah. so I guess you really don't believe in world peace. You selectively believe in it, you know, when it when it benefits you, you do. When it benefits you. Right. But for us, that's how we want to live our lives. We want children to to we want choirs to take part in it. We'd love school choirs. We'd love individuals that could sing from their from their shower, from their home, you know, we want bands, we want all kinds of people to take part in what we do. 
And uh, it's a big day. And I, I urge everybody to, you know, at least follow us or share us, you know, um, you know, on, on, uh, on all the social media that we have. I know some people don't like social media. I understand that. I'm not a big fan of it either, but in today's society, that's really all we have to get out there in the world to others. And I urge everybody to sign up and, and come on board and try to help us, bring us to their area, bring us to their state, to their community. You know, everybody wants to save the world, but they can't save their neighborhood. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, that. My grandmother would say, you got to save your neighborhood before you can dream about saving the world because your neighborhood's part of the world. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, makes ah, sense. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Now, when is this big day coming up? Um, it's going to be in August, but we're going to be announcing it in another week. We're going to let everyone know about it and they can come on board and, uh, you know, start helping us with uh, getting the word out there and, and just just helping everybody, you know. Yeah. Now, where where can they find Little Iguanas? Where can they go to actually find out about that? that your, the, right to our website. Um, you know, Little Iguana is spelled L-I-L and then Iguana, I-G-U-A-N-A dot -A org. Or you can go Little Iguana USA dot org, either one. Um, that's available too. Um, but yeah, you can get all kinds of great information and, and safety and kindness and respect and all kinds of easy information to use. You know, it amazes me when you brought up about the politics, you know, and, and how they wouldn't do it because, you know, it doesn't get a vote. And it, it makes me so infuriated because when I think about it, it's, you know, it's so important that, parents are aware that they could help their child you know there are many parents i hear all the time talking about how their children are acting out their children are hyper their children aren't listening their children are taking tantrums well you know maybe if they had a program like little iguana you know sure. and they implemented sure. it into their family life and and, and they and they taught their children the songs and they taught their children the lessons maybe the behavior of the child would change you know so it is important oh, yes yes you know, i guarantee that, I guarantee it. I guarantee, you know, even like our affirmation cards that we have, you know, we created it so that, you know, different things, one, you know, one topic self-worth, one topic is cool and calm, one topic's motivation, you know, one, one topic is being a good friend. But what we tell everybody is to take the card while they're sitting around a group of people and maybe it says, I will rise above, I will not be afraid, I will succeed. And instead of the teacher saying, well, this means this, what we wanted to do was have the school, the classrooms, the, the mom sitting with the kids. What does that mean to you? You know, this is what it means to me. What does it mean? Because once a teacher says, oh, this is what it means. Well, the kids have no thought of their own what that means. Yeah. You know, so what we want to do is we want to encourage because it's like everything else. When you say wear a blue t-shirt and you have 50 people and you tell them wear a blue t-shirt, don't say anything else, just say wear a blue t-shirt, you'll have 50 different color blues. Yes. <laughs> you'll have 50 different color blues. Because we all, though it's blue to us, you know, it may not be blue to you. Right. So that's why we do it. We do it in a way so that music embeds every lesson you know on that side of your brain you're always going to remember it it may be it may be a silly stupid song you know the days of uh schoolhouse rock you know conjunction junction what's your function it's a noun it's a verb it's like wow that's what that lady was trying to teach me in school for four years i get it <laughs> you know and 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 you remember i can remember that stuff i remember i'm just a bill sitting on capitol hill you know <laughs> i learned how the bill went to the president's desk it was signed yay you know <laughs> but sitting there in class and having somebody today boys and girls the bill goes to congress then it goes to... halfway through the kids looking up in the corner of the room going is that a spider Oh, yeah. that you know. Oh, look at that cloud out the window. It looks like a donkey. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they're not listening. No. But if the guy was up there singing the song to him, or the woman was singing the song to him, they'd remember it forever. Exactly. ABCs, A B C D E F G. Why do we do it through music? 
because they can remember it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And and that's a great way of remembering things because, you know, everybody loves music, you know. Yes. Well, yeah, I shouldn't say everybody, but pretty much, you know. Everybody does. Yeah. Everybody you does. know, yeah. but it's, you know, it's just what, you know, you don't, you know, I can't sing for my life. If I said probably <laughs> everybody would run out of the room, but <laughs> I love music, you know, sure. any time of, of, of the day. I, you know, and it puts me in the mood. It could clear my head. It can give me energy. It does a lot of different things, you know, and it just, it just depends on the song and the tone. You can go from one mo mood to another within within seconds just by the the notes and the sounds you hear and that's sure. how much how, that shows you how powerful music is when it can take a human and it, it could pump you with energy within seconds you could be tired you could hear a couple of of notes in the background you could hear the music and then all of a sudden all this energy from nowhere just draws within you you know yeah. and and it just changes your whole mentality and that's 100%. how powerful music is you yeah. know well what's that saying music soothes the savage beast yes you ever hear that i, I mean have. People, people say music soothes the savage beast because sometimes, you know, people don't realize music does change, alters, you, you know, like you say, you could be tired and sitting there. Next thing you know, some songs up there and you're, you're tapping your toes and you're, you know, and, and it brings back memories even of like when you were a kid or I remember yeah. the song when I did that. And, and like you say, the different genres of music, you, you're here all of a sudden, you know, you hear this sad song, you know, you're watching, uh, you're watching TV and uh, Sarah McLaughlin or whatever with the puppy dogs, you know, the Humane Society, give, to, uh, give me eyes. Oh, oh, you're wiping your eyes. You know, you're like, <laughs> donate, donate, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it, it, that song makes you whatever it is in that, in yeah. that feeling, in that, in that way, you know? So again, and it could be happy, you know? Right. I mean, you hear a different song, a different, you know, upbeat, and, you know, Beach Boys Day, you know, you know you're singing it out loud, though you're singing it bad. Yeah. Who cares? You're singing it, you know. And it's so important, too, because, you know, we have to also remember, even though we're taught by the age of zero to three, at any age in our life, we can change. Yes. So it's important to realize that it's not just about teaching these children from zero to three. It's, it's any age, you know, they, they could be going on the wrong path or they could be having problems in certain areas or they could be have, they could have, you know, trauma in their life and it's changed them completely and they're acting out, but with the right help, the right music, the right guidance, the right, you know, the, 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 the right path, you know, with a little help and guidance from others, you could change a person completely. It could, it can, you know, you can, there's always time to, to revamp yourself and to change yourself for the better. And it could happen at any time in your life. So, you know, we could change children, but and we could also change adults, you know, it's just teaching them these, these techniques, these songs, and, you know, it could break the, you know, the barrier where we could actually have more function in, you know, a society rather than an un- dysfunctional society correct i i agree 100 percent with you on that people you know the best thing that we found out is when parents are teaching their children little iguana stuff they're actually learning a lot of things like they oh i didn't know that i didn't know that you know i've told my children a million times look both ways before you cross the street what does that mean to a three-year-old yeah what does it mean you know what i mean like so what we do is you know we'll, we'll well, what mom and daddy used to, you know, meant to say is you need to look left, then you need to look right, then you need to look left again to make sure no, and we'll say things like during the show, we'll say like, make sure no hippopotamuses are coming and the kids go laughing, you know, and then yeah. they go like, what are you laughing at, giraffes? And mm -hmm. then they're like getting into it. Now they're like, no, no cars, because now you get them involved. Like yeah. when we're doing the shows, they're not just sitting there like logs, you know, going, oh my goodness, when does this end? You know, we're interacting with them. So at the end of every song, because we bring kids up on stage to be part of it during yeah. the elementary school shows, you got kids, all their hands are up. As soon as the song ends, their hands are up because they want to be the next person up there to be part of this, to be the mentor of the school. And it's yeah. just amazing. The programs, like I said, the, 
the safety up, if I could urge any parent to just try it and to look at it and see the difference of, you know, how their kids learn, um, how they could teach their kids how to be safety, you know, safe and kind and happy all the time and healthy. Boy, I'll tell you, it's it's the way to do it. our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to find the money to uh, do a daily television, animated television show. A daily television animated show that children can learn, sit there, learn different lessons, whether it's get permission, who's a stranger, take a buddy with you, be kind, you know, be, good friend out and about. It doesn't matter what the topic is. They'll be able to learn it very easily. And, you know, like I said, uh, Christian schools have been using it, Catholic schools, uh, um, Head Start we've done a lot of head start century programs. That's the after school programs. Um, so, you know, but definitely homeschoolers and, 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 uh, people that are taking care of their children at home. This is an incredible program for them to, to resource, to use. And they can find all this on the website, all this information, everything. Yeah. You go to little iguana, USA.org. You, you go to safety up, you go to lessons taught right at the top of the bar, right at the top, there's everything. You go to our YouTube channel. There's a YouTube link, uh, YouTube channel. We have, um, cool and calm classes with our friends. You know, they'll, they'll, um, they'll talk about how to stay calm, relax, different, different motion, some stretching, some yoga, even for kids. Nice. Um, then they'll see videos for the old people. They can go and look at, see what the stars are saying. You'll see things like uh, Buzz Aldrin and, and, and Doc from the Love Boat and Dick Van Patten and Ruth Buzzy and, and Phyllis Diller. I mean, you'll, you just, it, just funny how that came to be, but yeah, we're, um, we've been blessed. We've saved a lot of kids, you know, we've been to the white house under a couple different presidents, you know, when they told us we couldn't do TV, we made, we made some puppet shows in the past. We won some Emmys when we told that that would never happen. So the world is ours. All we need to do is get more people involved, people that care how this world is going, because, you know, our society is not getting any better right. and, and we need to change it. We need to give, like we tell our children, don't be scared, just be prepared. Right. Oh, you know, we make our children, you know, like I said, just how we look at our society. Like I was telling you about the book, you know, a gift from the heart. It's about not buying things. You know, everything is so commercialized these days, Stacy. Everything I have children, I've interviewed young children who don't go to birthday parties of their friends because they don't have money to buy a gift. Mm. that is the saddest thing I've ever heard in my life is that you can't go to your friend's house because you don't have money. You know, this, this book was made my Baba and I, I would go up to my grandmother's house during the summertime and we'd make cookies and, and treats and pierogies and stuffed cabbage. And we'd put them in the freezer. And when it was holidays or somebody's birthday, we took them out. And we gave them something that was a gift from our heart. It wasn't yeah. that we went and bought some useless piece of plastic crap that's going to be broken in five minutes. Right. Or buy them something. You know, we didn't buy our friends. We made something. You know, yes. the days I always urge people, you know, if if your friend is having a birthday, don't buy them anything. Find out what their favorite movie is. Go over to their house or have them come over to your house. Pop some popcorn, sit down and watch a movie together and laugh and share the moments with each other. Don't yeah. buy something because you know what? I'm 61 years old. I don't remember any present that I got when I was a kid. Yeah. But you know what? I remember the time when my uncle took me fishing for my birthday. I remember that. I remember the time when I was taken to a movie with with my friends and we watched the movie together, you know? Yeah. And, and and we sat together in the house and 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 my and my baba made me something and she brought it out for everybody you know i remember those days yeah. i don't remember the, the 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 item i was bought at 8 years old so why why do we do that why do we force christmas you know as kids christmas we were so happy we couldn't wait as adults it stresses us out of our minds yeah 
need that. I got to buy. I got to do this. I got to just stop commercializing every aspect of society. And yeah. if somebody tells you, oh, whatever, tell them, never mind. They don't need, you don't need to be around those types of people. Yeah. You know, do something from your heart. I mean, in society, even when I was a kid, Mrs. Savitsky across the street, she was raking her lawn. You know what, Jimmy? Jimmy went out and raked her lawn with her because that's what your grandparents and your parents told you. If you saw somebody needing help or doing something, you did it. Yeah. If, came, if my parents and my grandfather came home and I, Mrs. Savitsky was raking the lawn and I was right. playing, you know, or doing something, there would be some some definitely, you know, situation at hand. So you did that, you know, and we've lost everything. Everything yeah. is money. Everything is, you know, what are you going to do for me? Yes. Just, why can't we just go back to the days where it was kindness that over, overtook everything in your life. I agree a thousand percent. It's, you know, life has changed it and people put their hand out. What are you going to give, give me? What are you going to do for me? You know, and you know, they want everything, but they don't want to do anything. And that's the mentality that I'm seeing more of these days. And that's the mentality we have to break. And it's the act of kindness. It's the act of doing something good for somebody else. I think that was the biggest reward in my life that put me on the pathway that I went on was the the feeling of of, of accomplishment when I helped another human being. And, you know, that right. was a feeling that I couldn't can never be taken away from me. And it's probably one right. of the best feelings I ever felt in my life. And I feel like, you know, people have to realize that it's not all about them. You know, it's about gratitude, kindness, love, giving to others, you know, not worrying about receiving. And it's, you know, it's it's a, a world where we have to really, you know, start to really put those core values in, in shape again and really, you know, make kids really realize what, you know, morality is and, and, and values and, and, and the importance of it and, and how it makes an impact on other people's lives. Yes, I agree. So we'll just start it. Me and you today. Yes, here we are. definitely. Ambassadors of kindness and changing the world for the better. Yes. This is it. So I'm when in. Say, when did you change that day on January 29th, 2024? <laughs> I was inspired. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, definitely. An act of kindness. Be kind. It's so important. It's yep. so important. And where can people find your book, by the way, if they want to purchase the book or get the book, where can they go? Um, they can go right to Amazon right now. Amazon has it online. Um, there's also other versions, uh, the Kindle version and that, but we recommend the physical book so that you can learn how to turn a page, how to follow the words from left to right, up and down, you know, up to down. Um, and to be part of that. So you learn how to read, you know, yes. and uh, you can find it at Amazon, uh, Little Iguana, A Gift from the Heart. You can go to our website, littleiguanausa.org. Again, it's L-I-L and then Iguana, I-G-U-A-N-A, USA.org. And you can find all of our stuff there, our memberships for our online safety, everything, our activity boxes, we have a subscription box that comes every month if you want to learn a new uh, a new safety topic. Those are really cool because that's yeah. just a fun thing to do while you're learning about being safe. And where can someone get that cute little shirt in the back? I like that shirt <laughs> with the little iguana. That one? <laughs> yeah. Online. They're all online. That's Everything's awesome. Everything's online. It says treat others the way you want to be treated. I love it. I yeah. love it. I love it's it. It's part of our day. Oh. Well, Jimmy T, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Before we leave, are there are uh, do you have any takeaways, anything that you'd like the audience to remember from everything that we discussed today? Just start early as you can with kids. Do it through music and interactive role playing, and the kids will remember it forever. Yes, definitely. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Thank Jimmy, you. for being here. I appreciate it. And Alrighty. you have a great day. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.